Okay, here we have a type confusion in Apple's XNU. And for those of you who are going through the class in order, I apologize, but I need to make these videos stand alone. So I'm just going to have to cover the background again, although this is slightly different than other examples. So if you're skipping forward, you need to double check that you haven't seen what I've said yet. So XNU is X is not Unix. That is the kernel for iOS, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS that is based on the mock microkernel created at Carnegie Mellon University. A microkernel is an operating system design paradigm where you basically say, let's have the kernel do as little as humanly possible. Let's take major components such as, you know, file system handling or something like that. Let's put it out in user space and then let's have the kernel message and communicate with it back and forth. Now, obviously, you could see how that would have security benefits because, for instance, if the code that handles file system access has a vulnerability in it, now when it's being exploited, it would be exploited in user space instead of kernel space. But Apple says in their documentation that for performance reasons, they do not actually run all the components outside of the kernel, but instead they rely on mock primarily for its well-designed interfaces. So it was designed to handle sending messages around between a broken up kernel that was, you know, partitioned off into many subcomponents, and they can still design things as subcomponents, but run them in the kernel and then talk to them via mock interfaces and they'll achieve some benefits there for modularity and that kind of thing. Now in mock processes that we normally think of in an operating system is called a task, and there are one or more threads within a task. So the thread is the actual execution. There could be many of them. There's always at least one. And then the task is sort of the container that has all of the uh, information associated with the process important thing that it has is these things called ports because in this design paradigm where they're supposed to be sending messages around through various components of the system they need to do inter-process communication and they do that via these unidirectional message interfaces called ports so basically one task can communicate to other tasks via ports and tasks can communicate to the kernel via ports now ports have access controls on them which are called writes and the right to communicate with a port can actually be granted from one task to the other task by the task that owns the port. So basically, the task can say, hey, I want to let you communicate with me. Here you go. Here's the right to talk to me. Now, the handing off of that right can either be achieved via messages, which are sent to ports. So there's going to be a message queue and the port will process various messages. So the message could encapsulate a here you go. Here's the right to talk to me via some other task or it could be called just directly via an interface from user space like mock port insert write. Now there is a different vulnerability in this class that has to do with the use of mock port insert write, but in this particular vulnerability, what is happening is it is actually in the IPC write copy in function, which is processing a message and reading in a write that is being sent to the port and copying it into the namespace so that now this port should and this task should have access to some other write to communicate with some other thing. So as I said, the mock interface system can be used for tasks to send messages to other tasks, tasks to send messages to uh, the kernel. And so there's a bunch of user space APIs for doing things like creating new ports, sending messages to ports, and assigning writes between ports. In the code that you're going to look at, you may see references to something called a space, which is a port namespace. And the namespace is basically a list of port writes. And you can think of it like an access control list or a list of capabilities. So I want to just show specifically how that data structure of this, you know, notional list or access control list looks like. So there's an IPC space and the important thing in it is this is table field. The is table field is a pointer to an array of entries and these entries then are the things that have to do with writes. And so the first entry is a pointer to an IPC object and that corresponds to the IPC object that can be found as the first element of a port. So this is basically going to be a port. So one entry pointing at one port and describing what privileges it has. Okay, so this vulnerability, again, is a type confusion. And what is it caused by? It's caused by a race condition due to the opportunity in mock for multiple user space threads to be sending all sorts of mock messages around. And so they can cause multiple threads to occur in parallel. And if some context switching occurs in a place that there's not adequate mutual exclusion, then this can cause a race condition. And that's just, you know, a common problem within mock. And so they try to deal with that problem via locks and typical mutual exclusion things, but they're not dealt with correctly here. 
And then there is the use of the kData union inside of mock ports. So there is a kData field inside of mock port structure definition that is a union of a bunch of different pointers, but that has opportunities to get type confused. There's a function that can be used to change the kData out from underneath the code that might be running in that race condition. And there is insufficient sanity checks to deal with what happens if this kData is swapped out. So in the grand scheme of things, relatively small amount of hint code for you to go check out on the website. As usual, the hint code is just for something for you to refer back to. There's a few, you know, comments inside of there. But go look around in the real code, refer back to the hint code, and see if you can find the type confusion vulnerability. As one extra hint, we said that this is a race condition vulnerability. And so thread one is doing something, and you've got to figure out, you know, which function it is it in, and where exactly is that function preempted? And if preempted, going off to some other attacker controlled thread and doing some attacker controlled op operation would cause something bad to happen when context switches again back to thread one and it continues on in a type confused state. So go ahead and figure out, you know, what one and two are, where the confusion opportunity occurs.